Hi, welcome back to Exploring the Temple, Our Bodies Uncovered. And I am Sherry Zach Morris. And I'm Justine Shelton. And the topic today we're going to talk about is arthritis. That was actually the number one thing I wanted to see in this dissection, is I wanted to see arthritis in the joints. I've heard so much about arthritis, I thought it was some gnarly kind of barnacle looking thing. I had no idea what I was going to see, but I was very, very shocked. Yeah, and to be clear, in, in the instance of all of this, it's osteoarthritis. I was kind of hoping we, we might see some rheumatoid, but you get what you're dealt. And, right. and it was interesting because you would expect, especially if you felt the pain of it, you expect this like red nightmare, like, and right. like she says, barnacles are a lot of bone growth, that sort of thing. And the joints were still really quite beautiful. You yes. can see some inflammation and some wearing down. Um, and even one knee, I'm sitting there going, oh, that doesn't look too bad. I'm sure they were fine. And some, one of the orthopedic guys was like, that's a joint replacement right there. You right. know, that's someone who, who is ready. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that was probably the biggest surprise because for me, I felt like arthritis was a major degrading of the joint. But really, just even a little bit of a degrading in that cartilage coming down into that rawness and rubbing against the other side of the other bone, that's very, very painful. And that's what those orthopedic doctors told us, which was really eye-opening. So we looked at Lily first. Lily was the very first one that we looked at in terms of arthritis. She had some in her knee. After we got the kneecap off, which was so cool, the kneecap was maybe about this big, huh? Yeah, and you see the bone kneecap. shape on the back for how it tracks. You have the, the groove in the top, in the lower part of the um, femur and that's that groove that the kneecap slides in. So if there's tracking misalignment, that banging is going to cause osteoarthritis yeah. behind the kneecap. Yeah, exactly. So we flipped over the kneecap and guess what? It was a little red. Mm -hmm. It was a little rough, but it wasn't like gnarly, like barnacly, like, right? But that was arthritis. So that was the first exposure, like, well, that's arthritis? So, I, you know, what I say is it, to me, it looks like a blister that was broken open and then there's that red kind of raw skin underneath there not super red like that but just kind of like that you can just see that was a little bit of a tender spot right but that's really what it was because the cartilage had been worn away from that area and it was rubbing so then you put your finger on it and you could feel almost it feels like sandpaper right so then we got to the side of her knee and one side of her knee was very very sharp did yes, you notice that yes. right it was almost like it got ground a certain way to be like mm -hmm. sharp edges or something like that. So we were thinking like, is that maybe a, a tendon or a ligament that was pressing on that or cutting into that? I don't know. There was something in her gait that caused that, right? Apparently. Right. Yeah. 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 And it was, um, then, then there was, you know, the, the lower leg and the top, you know, you have the tibial plateau coming in touch with the bottom of the femur and you'll hear, hear doctors or, or your students say, I'm bone on bone. And that could mean there's the meniscus, the little horseshoe kind of cartilage padding on the inner part and the outer part of the joint. I was shocked how little that, that is. I know. It's just this little petite rim. And I've had two surgeries for that. Um, so that's part of it. But then to see, I was glad we had experts there to, to see, cause I'm yeah. like, that looks shiny and beautiful, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, except for see how thin that is and the layer of cartilage is gone. So that's what they mean by bone on bone. The meniscus might be mostly gone and you're getting that bone on bone right. and bone on bone creates what? More bone, yeah. osteoarthritis, and that's not comfortable. Right. The meniscus, yeah. like she said, is like a half of a disc, right? And it doesn't cover the whole you know, joint where they meet, right? It's only around the edges. It's yeah, like a, like a lip it. around it. And it was kind of rubbery. It was kind of a nice texture, right? Yeah. But it wasn't super thick and it wasn't super thin. It was just, it, to me, it was uh, an unusual, because I thought it covered the whole top, so that was just my misunderstanding. But we did see some wearing and some tearing of the meniscus yes. in some other bodies as well, right? So then we went to um, the lumbar spine. I think we went next when we saw Lily's lumbar spine. We, j we yes. talked about that, where yeah. we actually took out a disc. We took out two of her discs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the discs, the intervertebral discs in this case, are kind of the space, the spacers in between to keep that banging from happening so you don't get more bone growth. That's part of the reason, but then also the space so that as the nerves exit the spinal cord, 
and the spine, the casing of the spine, they have room to get out without being compressed. And um, the texture was profound and the texture was, you could see you have the outer part is the um, annulus fibrosis and the inner part is the nucleus pulposus. The outer part, I, you know, you, you get right. book learning and you have the fibers that run opposite ways that allow the disc, the spine to have that mobility of moving in all directions. You could see the direction of the fibers and how that's going. It was amazing. Now, we couldn't get the whole disc out whole because right. you can't. We got a wedge of it. And, and we have was, a wedge. It was very difficult for me to get that out because right. you're destroying what you always try and fix. Yeah. You know, exactly. but to take that out and we couldn't get the nucleus pulposus, but I was able to put my finger down between the bones and mm -hmm. feel it was similar to to the, the fluid in the joints, the synovial fluid. I would say a little more viscous, but this viscous fluid that you can kind of rub in your finger. Right. And and we had um, our friend was like, I'm never going to refer to it as the inside of a jelly donut again. You know, there isn't that much, you know, it's not like the nucleus is going five feet this way and five feet that way when you right. move. It's just to create a little extra space. Yeah. But all those are joints. Every vertebral connection right. is a joint. I think we don't really know what a disc felt like because when we took it out, it was kind of rubbery. Right? Yeah. It, it wasn't really super pliable. It was kind of a really weird texture, but we thought well, maybe because it, was, it wasn't living tissue. Right. So, yeah, that, so it's be that texture was different. But it was interesting because the lowest one that we took out was much thinner, and the one above it was a little bit thicker. So as you can imagine, gravity and as many birthdays as you have creates a little bit of that. So what does that tell us in yoga? Axial extension, good yeah. posture, right? All of that to help that non, you know, to stop that compression in, in your lower back. So then we went to uh, some other tables to look at what arthritis looks like. So we went to a hip. Yeah. We went to a hip, and we saw a similar thing that we had saw underneath Lily's patella, right? That little rawness. She actually had a little bit of rawness um, on the top of the femur, on the bottom of the femur as well. But in the hip, we can see the whole socket, right? And we can see patches of where the cartilage has worn off and then where that little, I call it the red blistery area is. We saw it matching on the acetabulum, which is the ball, right? So you can just see how it fits in there and exactly where that wear would be. And our orthopedic Taiwanese doctor said that that would be very painful for people. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it didn't look super bad, but I can imagine raw against raw. Yeah. Yeah. And what surprised me, I mean, you know, again, you go back to book learning and everything you've been told, and I knew it was a deep joint, but at one at one table they had taken that apart and then they put it back together and they would just kind of lift so you could feel how the see and and notice how it's sucked into the joint and then eventually it will release right. but then from the top of the acetabulum to see the little hole where the blood supply the nerve yeah. all of that gets in that was cool that was amazing and then also the the labrum you hear about a torn labrum in the hip or the shoulder and how painful that is how hard it is to heal and I'm expecting this like big, you know, yeah, right, rubber very, thing, like a gasket, right? Yeah, yeah, it was very fine, yeah, very thin, very. Fatigued. Do you think that suction sound? I mean, this is what they did. They put the ball in the socket, and they said, "Now try to pull it out." Right? There was no ligaments, tendons, muscles, or anything. Right? You try to pull it out, and you can't. And all of a sudden, you go, and it made that big sound like yeah. that. Was that the labrum? You think that was creating that little bit of suction in there? God, I hadn't thought of it I know, that way. That's I, was I was just thinking. thinking of physics of the joint, of being in the joint, right, but, but you're right, the labrum, the labrum is there, the seal. Right, the labrum is the seal. And that was oh, a strong seal. Yeah. I was yeah. amazed, yeah. So then yeah. we went over to Tony the sailor man, we call him the pirate. And when we saw his shoulder socket, oh no, we almost cried, I almost cried. There was a big gouge in, okay, what was the top of the, top humorous. of the humerus and it was not funny i'm sorry it was, okay, right it, yeah. it, you know like a, like a ball and socket right but in the shoulder joint there was a big groove in it that groove was it was a good inch long. and a half to too long the width of yeah. linguini right like i can't and even deep. imagine what it yeah i would it say several millimeters repetitive motion repetitive motion repetitive oh. motion 
And yeah. I'm thinking, okay, so I'm looking at that, right? I'm looking at, you know, the detached bone. I'm thinking, look at that groove. What is that caused by? It's got to be rubbing on something. So I put my finger up into the other area, right, where it would be the ball and socket, and there was a very sharp area. In his bone, shoulder. probably. Yeah, it was the front of the scapula digging in, almost carving. Yeah, like that, I'm... I got to think yeah, about that. I know. How that could have occurred. So the time Rene's doctor came over and said, that's a total joint replacement situation. Yeah. 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 So those, when, when we ran into those moments, we had to take a pause and really just be there with that person and know that they were going through some pain. Yeah. And, you know, the shape of the, you know, because the, the two main ball and, ball and socket joints, maybe the only ball and socket joints in the body, yeah. hip and shoulder. And again, back to that book learning, you know, one's very deep and stable. And, and then the shoulder, once you give up in stability, you get in mobility. But from like a really deep, that hip, even post-mortem would still yeah. suction and hold that there. And then the shoulder was just very like just the smallest little socket, right. you know, and then the ball moving around in it, it was... yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why it was so complex because of so many muscles and attachments that come into that shoulder that do that does give it the stability. Mm -hmm. That's the stability of that, and yeah. we could, we we saw so many tendons and ligaments in that area. I I don't even know how we can separate everything and identify everything. We tried, but that yeah. was that was really a complex area. I thought. Yeah, and it's not as in a textbook where it's laid out in a very beautiful way right. and we can really differentiate it. It's there were times I was like. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know. I know. So we got to the point where we felt like, okay, this is a little bit even more than anatomy. It's like, ah, right. Like you yes. just want to see it. You don't even care what it's called. You don't even care what's connected. You just want to see this like amazing thing inside of us and how it all works. So the arthritis, um, the last one was the lumbar. And I just want to make sure that we did mention that because that was the only area where I felt that was really kind of really bumpy stuff, like significantly barnacle-like, yeah, barnacle really... right? Yeah, and for me, what was different, it was, <laughs> it's funny the perceptions you have that you just get smashed. Right, I know. I had this idea like, oh, you get lumbar, you get osteoarthritis in the lumbar, it's going to be like deposits, like little snowflake bones, you know, added on there. It misshapes the bone. Yeah. So the whole bone shifts, and then it could be like a growth off of that, but... It's not like some fairy dust comes in and like drops this bone there. It's yeah. the bone is changing and moving and growing in ways that are dysfunctional. Right. Totally sh changed the shape of the lumbar disc below it completely from the right and the left. Yeah, and what was for interesting for me with working with the lumbar spine and Lily was a small person. Yeah. You know, if if you're my structure, you know, six foot three, carrying quite a bit more weight than Lily, um, that's going to have a lot more gravitational pull than say Lily at five, five one I think she was and, yeah. and 107 pounds. Right. But yet still, you know, generally the lower lumbar is going to have more dysfunction because it's the bottom of the pillar that's holding you up. There's more right. weight above, and it was true to form even in someone at that size. Yeah. So right. Kind of. So there was also those moments of oh good, I'm on the right track here in what we're working with and where we want to create space. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, to see the muscular, yeah. we'll get into that, but the muscular impact of the psoas and the QL and how that can affect the structure of the lumbar spine and the, the ability to extend and have that axial extension or to be stuck in this compression. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you don't move it, you lose it, right? That whole thing, if you don't run, you rust. That all that, it, that was so obvious in this yeah. whole episode of this journey, this dissection journey. It's really, really is. And I think probably maybe because we had Lily and we saw that. Yeah. We saw how much she was, and the right word is compacted. She was compacted. Everything in her body was just like stuck together. Very little mobility, so yeah. Yeah. So that's what we found out about arthritis. I hope you learned a little bit of some new stuff in that, and we'll be on to another subject in the next segment. All Signing right. off. Thank you.